All right, part two. Sorry about that, the camera died. I'm back for part two. I really wanna answer all of your questions. So, Jack Rose asks, what do you do for work? You mentioned a shop or virtual visiting or something. Can you expand on what you do to get into fashion? Yeah, I kind of feel like I was glossing over that in the other questions, but I'm an e-commerce manager for a chain of boutiques in Manhattan called Ina NYC. Essentially, I run a lighting studio. I deal with the fulfillment of our orders and the shipping and the social media. Um, this job I took after being a journalist for a short period of time and essentially I'm like a professional reseller if you want to put it that way but um, because you know I'm on a constant quest I think that in the near future I'm probably going to have a different position but stay tuned and in the past I've been kind of I think anxious about being very candid about what I do professionally. I don't know why, I guess like my fear of the internet, uh, but that's what I do. I run an uh, e-commerce store and I work in a lighting studio and Chris who is helping me with the first part of this video is uh, helps with the photography. GP asks, how do you identify in terms of gender and sexuality? I think this, is a, this question is valid considering the current climate in fashion. I was talking to Caroline about this and she told me I there are different pronouns or different language that I should be more adept at using, but I am a heterosexual male is what is the answer that I think I can come up with. Um, but obviously uh, our culture is developing quicker than we could have expected in terms of kind of this identity politics, uh, which is both exciting and can be problematic. But for fashion, it's mostly exciting. I think that when I first took an interest in fashion, especially looking at GQ, it was all, there was all this fear about doing something that was like seen as feminine. Like uh, everything was like kind of, everything in the hashtag menswear world was always structured as like, this is super masculine. These are the best socks to wear. And I always found that corny. Even when I was young, I was like, this is, it, it's silly, it's fashion. It's frivolous and it can be feminine. I think it's a feminine thing and that's a good thing. Nina Molina asks, and once again, sorry if I can't pronounce your names, I'm, I'm a dummy, I'm very dumb. After the golden 80s, the 90s anti-fashion, the aughts globalism, and the tens overconsumption, what do you think fashion will be? How do you picture fashion's future? I think it's a lot easier to look at these decades in retrospect like with the 80s, we can look at all the trends that kind of dominate that sphere from like power suits from Giorgio Armani to kind of like the neon pastels and like of the basically the consumer culture that was built out of that. And it's easier to look back at the 90s and say, oh yeah, like grunge was really cool. And you had the minimalist designers like Helmut Lang. Um, but what do I think like 2020 is going to look like? It's really hard to say. It's really hard to kind of pinpoint and identify these decades in the future. Uh, I mean, there are people who are trend forecasters who it's their professional job and they still not can't necessarily say for certainty what it's going to look like, uh, which is why I kind of stick to a very close range terms of looking at like trends. I think that this androgyny or not even androgyny, just like this fluidness of garments is going to continue. And I think that for the immediate future, we're going to see wide fits, we're going to see boxier fits, we're going to see clothing that's a little more tailored, a little cleaner, a little smarter, as the British say, in terms of, rather than the streetwear, hoodies, casual clothing that was dominating for like the last five years. Where do you thrift? Maybe do a thrift outfit video. Um, so I live in New York, and some of my best, the best thrift stores, I think, objectively, are those uh, involved or around like L train vintage that includes no relations in Manhattan. Just based on my experience, their inventory seems to come from warehouses. They have actually older pieces, not like vintage quote unquote, but they have a lot of pieces that are just like pulled out of a bin from the 80s and 90s and it's priced at a reasonable, like a fair price, like something you might expect outside of New York at a thrift store, just like, hey, this is an old jacket from the 80s, $20. Front General Store in Dumbo, Brooklyn. This is a Japanese-run store, and they have 
excellent vintage piece. Um, Front General Store has a lot of beautiful pieces, like really old Levi's. They have old like workwear and military wear, stuff that really aligns with uh, this the YouTube culture. They actually have a really great eye. Lucas Cash asks, favorite music songs right now? Also, is there any music that inspires your fashion? Um, so that the musicians that I like have inspired my fashion. So we got the Fleet Foxes. Maybe I try to dress like them. I'd love their music. I've always loved music. I don't know exactly if there is something that specifically kind of like I take a cue from uh, certain musicians. But, uh, you know, there are obviously musicians who are extremely stylish and maybe not necessarily my cup of tea. Like, I think that John Mayer has dope style, but I think that there are only like three songs of his that I like. Uh, Madrana, I'll put it up right here. First of all, big fan of your style, TBH. What is your favorite accessory and clothing that you own? Oh, oh. Um, I would say my favorite Garment would have to be my OAMC patchwork bomber. I think that's just my favorite just because it's so loud and dynamic and interesting and I wear it a lot because I do have pieces that I think are really interesting and I'm not really wearing them. Like I have this Acne Studios kind of like wax paper jacket, which is very cool, but I'm not getting a lot of use out of it, so I wouldn't call it my favorite one. The OAMC bomber, I try to wear it basically whatever the weather permits. Michael Tandy, how into fashion were the friends that you grew up with? Like I said earlier in this video, dude, um, not really, but the people I hung out with were kind of these who were interested in the same video games or the same TV or movies as I was, and we were all kind of eccentric, but nobody else was eccentric in my way, which was clothing. I mean, I, you know, it, it was not something that people were involved in. If you're really interested in fashion right now, you want to be around people in fashion. And I think that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, but I guess I would, because we live in the age of the internet, you don't have to be going to high school or college with those people. You can meet them online. And that's what I'm doing. Fendi Philippe asks, do you like Philip Klein? I don't know if he's being silly with this question, uh, but I should just be really candid with this. Typically, with any designer, I go to lengths to kind of be like, if I don't love your aesthetic immediately or I don't love what you're doing, I, I, I always try to see what I might like. You need to be critical when you're looking at a designer's work or aesthetics, and it's not just about that gut feeling like, I like this, I don't like this. Because often, a designer will challenge us and then we'll come around to like, oh, I totally get your vision. Philip Klein, I think, is horrendous. I think it's the worst designer right now, and uh, it's just gross. It's gaudy, and it's kind of really trashy. And I'm not saying that that can't change. I'm not even saying that my opinion about him might ch not change, because it could change. Uh, but if you ask me, I think it's the worst of fashion. Arturo um, asks, what's the most worn item in your closet? What's the least worn item in your closet? and what era of streetwear has been your favorite? And right now my most worn garments are probably my two black wide pants because I wear them on rotation like basically every week and every day. Least worn item in your closet? Probably the suit I wore to graduation. And what era of streetwear has been your favorite? It has to be street goth. Brody asks, this question isn't really related to fashion but have you ever tried psychedelics? And if you have had a trip, or if you haven't had a trip, would you? Brody, my grandmother watches this show so no, I haven't. Will Henderson, favorite brands slash designers. I don't know, it's always changing. Um, and it's hard to just say these are my favorites all the time. I do really like OAMC. Whenever I see pieces of theirs, I try to pick them up. I might do an OAMC video in the future. Constantly changing, it's constantly evolving. Um, you know, and it, it sometimes it's just about how I'm feeling in a per certain year or a certain stage in my life and what I'm looking for in aesthetics. What's your opinion on the best five sneakers ever? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. Um, not that I'm not qualified. I just like, I feel like a top five sneaker thing is for more of like a streetwear focused channel. My top five's gotta be uh, Crocs, uh, 
joy birds or <laughs> what are they called? Free birds, all birds. Um, Crocs with gibbets, that's three. The shoes that chefs wear. And fifth, uh, has to be shoes, sneakers you buy at Walmart. Those are my five. AIS, fave visual artworks or artists. What a, who, how could I do such a thing? How could I decide from the world? You know, Chris actually really introduced me to her and I've been interested in her work. Uh, Chloe Wise is pretty cool. It's really cool work. She's a contemporary artist. I would check her out. Uh, favorite artworks, I don't know. Like, there's a world of art. I don't think I can decide what my favorite artworks are. Jalapeno22 asks, what was your first designer piece? I think if I had to decide if I have to pinpoint like my first designer piece, it would probably be the Ralph Lauren patchwork jeans that I talked about in the last video. The first piece that I really spent a lot of money on was probably the Rick Owens Shio baskets that I got on Grailed. Uh, Santove asks, and for all my viewers who are made it this far in the video, check out his channel. He needs a lot more subscribers, you guys. He's making interesting videos. I beg you to take a look at his channel. I'll keep put a link in the description. Uh, favorite places to shop in New York City? Uh, what do you call it? Toto Kaleo, Toto Kello. I always forget which way it's pronounced. They have the best selection in Manhattan. I think it's some of the coolest clothes. You can always check out, of course, Dover Street Market um, and other spots in the Big Apple include, those would be the two. Those, if, if you were gonna go check stuff out, I would go there and walk around Soho. Those would be the places. JOS, your favorite Instagram accounts? Hard to say, I'm not sure. Um, you know, some of these questions, I feel like I wish I had a better answer, but it's like, I feel like I wanna go into more detail like with that one, that one deserves its own video. Or like Steezy asks, what do you think of fast fashion? I think that it deserves its own video. So I might come back to you Steezy. T-E-N, Tanita P asks, what are your thoughts on the archive trend? Personally, I see a lot of it as just an extension or, uh, or evolution of hype beast culture. Do you think that's fair? Yeah. I think that all of this is very pretentious and silly and I don't think there is something more legitimate. I don't think these people are like librarians unless they intend to make it that, or evolve it to be that way. And you know, I think that websites like Grailed have really done a lot to establish this conceptualization of pre-owned clothing having even more value than, you know, brand new clothing. I think that that Grailed has basically led the charge and in its wake, these, you know, rich kids have started buying a bunch of clothing and putting it away and calling it an archive. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to batch anybody because I'm so, uh, because there is some, there are people who are probably doing it pretty cool. And if I had the opportunity, I might do something similar. Shogun asks, do you ever feel exhausted or overwhelmed by the constantly changing world of fashion? I'm not even a person who follows what's trending that closely, but sometimes I wonder if I would be better off selling my entire wardrobe and leaving fashion behind altogether. Uh, Shogun, well, you have commented on my videos, so you follow me. Um, and, um, do you feel like you should leave fashion behind altogether? If it's exhausting, this, it, this is how I feel about it, and this is how I've always felt about it. If you find it tedious or exhausting, or you find yourself feeling obligated to be a part of it, or it isn't fun, then you can leave it behind. You're, you're no, nobody is forcing you, at least it really depends on what your life is like or where you're at. But I mean, in the United States, in New York City, you could probably get away with not even caring about fashion at all. It's unlikely to affect your professional and personal life if it's not something that's a priority for you. You could probably have a very high paying job and meet uh, somebody who you want to have a relationship with and have friends and all those things and dress like a bum. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters at all. I think that it's the job of marketers and fashion brands to constantly push this idea that it's relevant or important, but fashion is entirely frivolous. So if you feel overwhelmed by it, Shogun, 
I don't, I think that you should just follow what you think is fun. The only reason that I take an interest in fashion is because I personally think it's fun and I would never say that it is actually important. It's as important as art is, which is to say that it's a thing that people want but don't need. Ruben asks, yes or no? Yes. E Ehan asks, how are you? I'm doing well, I've been better. I mean, like, you know, let's see how this week goes. I think it could be a great week, but uh, let's see what happens. Uh, and Max Rawling asks, who's your favorite Instagram influencer and why? Max, once again, I think I gotta go back to that question, but I appreciate you commenting all the time and I wanna make sure that I, if there are any questions that I didn't answer on here, guys, let me say this once again from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me that I could post a silly video on YouTube and a bunch of people would comment with, they would, you would say, yeah, talk about this. I wanna hear from you. That, it blows my mind. It really does. And I wanted to take the last moments of this video to truly articulate my gratitude for this, this little community that's developed, for, for giving me a space to talk about these things, and for you guys to actually take an interest in it. It, it means the world to me. It's the most exciting part of what's going on right now. Uh, and I hope to continue this journey. I hope to continue this journey moving forward. And I'm sorry if the video was long, but really this is a video for the real enthusiasts of the channel. So I figured if you wanted to see this, you would, you would stick through and watch all of it. Namaste, guys. Another video will come out soon. Thank you so much for being a part of this channel so far, and I will see you in the next video.